So uh, here we are in this wonderful building. Um, uh, many people uh, ask me who was Peter Mack, uh, and unlike most um, uh, American cancer centres where the, the, that's named after a great philanthropist, in fact, Peter Mack, Sir Peter McCallum, uh, was a doctor. He was an organiser. Uh, and like most Australian heroes, he actually wasn't Australian. He was a Scot uh, <laughs> who went to New Zealand, emigrated with his father, who was a grocer. And he was a very bright boy and very good at sport. Uh, and so he, he was naturally an Australian, had to come to Australia because he loved sport and he had to come to Melbourne. Uh, he got a scholarship to go to a, uh, a private school in, in, uh, in New Zealand. And uh, he uh, then became a Rhodes Scholar at Oxford and he did well enough there to get into the University of Edinburgh where he studied medicine. And uh, after the war, he was involved in World, World War I uh, in the ambulance brigade where he got gassed. Uh, he decided uh, he'd become a pathologist and uh, went back to the Royal Infirmary in Scotland uh, and then was offered two jobs, one in South Africa uh, and one in Melbourne at the University of Melbourne. And luckily for us, he decided to come to Melbourne. Uh, he could have had the, uh, uh, the All Nations rugby uh, uh, trifecta there with uh, South Africa, Australia and New Zealand. Uh, he loved uh, uh, rugby all his life. Uh, and he came to Melbourne and he became uh, one of the, the founding fathers of the medical establishment here. He set up the College of Obstetrics and Gynaecology, the, the College of uh, Physicians. Uh, he was a great organiser. He was twice the dean of the University of Melbourne, which is just next door here. And uh, he, uh, after the First World War, organised for the Melbourne Hospital, which was in the centre of the city here, to move out to be next to the university so that students could come from the university to a teaching hospital. He also encouraged uh, researchers to come uh, to Melbourne and establish the McFarlane Burnett uh, Research Institute, uh, was uh, founding father of the Walter and Eliza Hall, one of our many great research institutions just down the road here in Royal uh, Parade. He was uh, commissioned by the Victorian government who had a birth, deaths and marriages register uh, to investigate what appeared to be an epidemic of cancer uh, in Australia in the, in the late 40s. Uh, he was asked to give them advice on what the causes were and what they should do about it. And he came back to them uh, with this uh, report um, that uh, in 1949 he said, nothing but the best is good enough uh, for patients with cancer. I suggest that you should form a cancer institute to study the causes because we don't know what they are and we should evaluate new therapies. And so embedded in the, the DNA of what became the Peter McCallum Cancer Institute was innovation and research. They're very important things that we do. Our motto is the best in cancer care. Uh, obviously, we're a clinical uh, provider of cancer services. But we're also a research institute, so accelerating discovery is that next pillar of, of research. And translating to cure is taking what you learn, putting it back into the clinic. That's the translational aspect, an educational process, which is so important to what we do here at Peter Mac. The building. I'm sure you've all seen as you've come up uh, is a really an iconic building, uh, we think, for an iconic site. And it's particularly apt that it's here because also on this triangular site, uh, he established the Royal Dental School because he recognised the link between dental health, oral health and, and human health. And when that was pulled down, uh, we, we got this beautiful building here uh, designed by Rob McBride and, and Deb Ryan. We're very fortunate, and some of you will get a chance to have a look at our cancer imaging department. We're one of the few cancer imaging departments of, with nuclear medicine that isn't in the basement. Uh, we have windows, which is great. And that flag there is, is where patients sit uh, while they're having uptake for their PET uh, scans. A wonderful uh, environment. Our techs have windows, which they love. Uh, and that uh, sunset there is uh, from the radionuclide therapy uh, room uh, where patients uh, sit for four and a half hours uh, having their, their treatment. Our nurses get to, to look at them through lead glass, but it's a wonderful environment for patients to be treated. And so today we're celebrating 20 years of, of PET and PRRT here at Peter Mac, and 
this is a really a, a rich reward for, for our patients uh, to be in this beautiful new building. And you've seen the atrium uh, that, that other bottom left view is the view from my lab. I'm a clinician researcher and I run a lab. And so up on the 12th floor, I have wonderful views out to the hills. It's also an iconic location uh, for this building because it really reflects um, what's central to Melbourne. This is the, 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 the street going straight down to that very tall building. It's called Elizabeth Street. It's the, the midpoint of the city that separates what's called the Hoddle Grid. Uh, uh, Melbourne was set up in the Victorian era where urban planning was just starting to have its genesis and it's set up as a, a golden mile of, of uh, rectangular uh, uh, streets. And the, the very middle one is Elizabeth after Queen Elizabeth the first, not the second. Uh, and uh, the main street the other way is called Burke Street, uh, which was the governor of uh, New, New South Wales as it was then. And this road splits. It's something called the Haymarket. When, when Melbourne was a horse and carriage uh, city, people would bring hay for the people who had their, their, their homes in central Melbourne to the Haymarket uh, roundabout. And there's two roads. One goes off to Sydney, that's called Royal Parade. And the other one goes off to the gold fields, which made Melbourne the richest city in the world in the mid-1800s. And, and so it's a very apt location for us to be. We're in a, a fabulous biomedical precinct. We're next to the Royal Melbourne Hospital, the Walter and Eliza Hall, the uh, Melbourne um, uh, University Medical School is right next door, uh, the Howard Florey Institute, the Walter and Eliza Hall, Bio 21 Institute, and the Royal Children's Hospital just down the road. So we like to think this is our, our answer a little bit to, to Boston's uh, Cambridge uh, biomedical uh, precinct. We moved from a beautiful site uh, in East Melbourne in the Fitzroy Gardens in East Melbourne just uh, four months ago. That was a wonderful site as well, but uh, the reason I put this Google map up is to also show you what a beautiful uh, city we have in, in terms of the uh, gardens that we have. The founding fathers of Melbourne put in the statutes. That there had to be one acre of land for every four of, uh, of built up uh, land. and so. That gave us a lot of parks in, in the central city. We've got Royal Park up around us, Botanical Gardens, Fitzroy Gardens. It's really quite a beautiful city. And I hope you, while you're here, you have the chance to walk around and, and, and appreciate the city. Cancer imaging here at Peter Mac is really uh, centred around hybrid imaging. It's really been the strength of our, our program for many years now. We have four state-of-the-art PET CT scanners. We closely integrated uh, with our radiology uh, department as a single department. We have radiotherapy planning, radionuclide therapy. Uh, I run a preclinical imaging facility that you'll see some work from. I run the translational research laboratory. My own lab is called the Molecular Imaging and Targeted Therapeutics Lab. We run an imaging CRO and we have a cyclotron. And, and a lot of the work that we do here is really uh, vitally dependent on the work of our radiochemists. And, uh, the, the meeting that we're holding this week is really a testament to their work. We have a fantastic group of, of radiochemists that I'll introduce you to and great collaborators uh, in the, in the um, university domain with Bio21, the chemistry group, uh, Paul Donnelly's group in particular, uh, a number of uh, other uh, groups that we work with and, and Cyclotech as our commercial partner in the Cyclotron have been great friends and great supporters of our program over the years. Um, we have a hybrid uh, uh, molecular imaging uh, process, which we think is a centrepiece of our clinical and translational research uh, program. And so welcome uh, to Peter Mac. We're very pleased to have you here. Uh, unashamedly today, we're going to focus on our own data and experiences in uh, PET and PRRT because, it's, as I said, it's our 20th anniversary of starting those programs. However, we recognise that we stand on the shoulders of giants uh, and look forward to welcoming many of them here at uh, the Therapeutics World Congress over the coming days. Very pleased to have particularly uh, a number of my old fellows here from uh, overseas and, and uh, within Australia. I'm very proud of what we've achieved, but we look forward to the next phase of our journey. Uh, and for that, uh, I've decided to, in my anecdote, to look back on the last 20 years uh, and ask the young generation, some of my, a couple of my stars, Michael Hoffman and Grace Kong, to, to look to the future, what we're going to do in, in coming uh, uh, years. Uh, they're going to take up the baton for us. 
and in closing, uh, my old friend Rich Wall uh, is going to give us uh, an international perspective on these evolving fields. Uh, Rich has been one of the great pioneers of PET and radionuclide therapy. I think he was here for the opening of the PET Centre 20 years ago. Old, old friends uh, from the University of Michigan days, and it's really a great pleasure to have you here, Rich. Uh, it's, it's wonderful. So with that, uh, I'll do the, the final welcome, which is a traditional one, uh, to, to pay our respects to the uh, uh, elders, uh, uh, past and present of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nature, Nation, uh, the Aboriginal owners of this land on which we meet. Uh, and with that, uh, thank you again. I'm going to go on perhaps to the next talk, please, Patrick, uh, which is on PET.